I feel like BFA for the average player was one of the most confusing expansions for lore so far. Let's now kind of turn our eyes to everything going on with the Jailer and all of that. Unless Chet has like massive questions that they still want to ask. What's up, everybody? It is time to talk about some lore. I actually need to get the chat open. I want to be looking at everything that's going on, see if anybody has questions, because Nobel, you are the, the king of the lore. You know absolutely everything in the World of Warcraft universe. It blows my mind every oh, time I have up. a chance to talk to you. It blows my mind. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where did those, Where did you get those glasses and that hat? Were you trying to imitate my look somehow? Wait, Is are you what's wearing happening? the sa same exact thing as me right now? I mean, no, I felt like, I, felt like I, I would do like a hat thing, you know? I felt, mm -hmm. like could, I felt like we could do that together. I felt, And I felt like the glasses made me look smart. I was actually just telling my chat, though, the main reason I had to wear glasses was not only to look intelligent, but also because I got rat eye. I got rat eye last night. You ever get rat eye? Um, I, I played for 14 hours straight. And I didn't take a shower before I went to bed. I think my tear ducts got clogged, my eyes swollen. <sighs> And tell rat, the people what eye. you were doing in those 14 hours. I don't know if I can. Can I talk about furries on the method stream? <laughs> I don't know if I can. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about furries on the method stream. I'm really, I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, but you I know the one the thing show. that we're here to talk about is not furries. It's lore. And we could talk about the furry lore a little bit later, maybe on another stream. Maybe we'll have you on Allcraft and we'll do a deep dive on the furry verse. Uh, I believe it's called the furry fandom. That's what I learned last night. But today, let's focus on the lore of WoW. Let's start too with kind of everything that happened towards the end of. I, I, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like BFA for the average player was one of the most confusing expansions for lore so far. For the average player, uh, I, I would say so. There's a lot of hinting and a lot of, you know, this is kind of coming. Um, but at the same time, they have been improving with the way that they're telling the story, with everything like being voice acted and in-game cutscenes and whatnot. Um, it's hard to how was the lore for you is maybe a better question. Yeah, I, so I actually, I felt like in Legion, there was a lot of stuff like I, I was kind of just thinking what it's like to be an average player, right? And go through and mm -hmm. you're obviously not reading quest text. I, I feel like the average player is not doing that. Uh, I feel like the average player was kind of reliant on cutscenes and thinking about Legion in particular was, wow, there's all this voice acting. You got all of these big moments that that have the in-game cutscenes. It, it seemed like the lore was being delivered in a pretty solid way. And then I felt like when we got to BFA, there obviously are a lot of the in-game cutscenes, but the way that they're delivered and also the way that I felt like the story needed to fit together with zones that were scaling yeah. and the way that I, I felt like you got story in weird places this time around. I honestly didn't know what was going on half the time until I found the lore outside. And I'm someone who does read quest text every now and then. Uh, sometimes I'll skip it. Might might also be a big part is because they just covered so many things in one single go what started off as a faction conflict then flowed into okay what are we doing now then there was all of a sudden there was an old god around there's something with azeroth and azerite there was a lot of things going on at the same time it might also play a part into like okay what is going on now yeah you know the the other thing that i kind of thought when i i remember when they told uh asman and i because we, we got to do uh an all craft for for the announcement of this expansion and when they told us about the story i had been expecting an old gods expansion i had actually talked to you about right. it too towards the end of legion i believe it was on all craft and you know we're, we're getting ready for old gods and then when i got there and they actually told us it was like hey faction war you know we just got back faction war which made a lot of sense but it was just like really like oh here we go again like same exact thing and i felt like even though that is a powerful narrative the idea that you just got back from an alien planet everything's all screwed up there's battle for resources on your home and while you're so focused on this small skirmish in front of you you miss the bigger threat that that is the old gods i thought that that was something that is very powerful but i felt like it's a narrative that's a little bit tired and well and also a narrative yeah. that takes a lot of time to build up and that wasn't necessarily they even something they even had time for to dive into those intricacies in the two-year period. 
Well, they openly said that they kind of felt like Garage was done wrong and they wanted to do it better. And it's like, yeah, it's fine that you want to keep on bashing with the whole faction war thing. Uh, but like you said, it's it's already done in World of Warcraft. Ain't it? I would have loved to see like tentacles burst out at the start and this is your old god yeah. expansion. Imagine 8.3 right at the get-go, like little in invasions in the little zones. Have the faction war as a side thing, so flip it around. But at least the faction war with Sylvanas, you know, being such a key part, as well as Volgin whispering and whatnot, it does all tie into the next expansion, into Shadowlands. So it did have its part to play. That's nice. I suppose. Yeah, you know me. I'm definitely a fan of the tentacles. Would have liked to have them pop up early as well. <laughs> I, I definitely would have. I, but uh, I think with that as well, it did feel like there were a lot of missed opportunities. I, I felt like. I went into the final raid and I was like, this is where I wanted to be hanging out the entire expansion. Like, that was so beautiful. And like, we didn't have quests in, in a zone that, that really felt like that. I mean, obviously you have the, the retooled, uh, two retooled zones uh, from Mop and Kata that all in all, they were, they, they were fine quests. I liked the gameplay of it. I liked getting the coalescing essences or whatever they were called to then get into the visions. I thought visions were really well done and uh, hopefully something that's brought into the tower for Torghast. I, like, I really did like that. But I mean, look, the, the retool zones when you had this insane temple that as somebody who grew up reading hmm. H.P. Lovecraft, I was like, I'm here. Like, this is, this is, I was all about it and I, I just didn't get enough. <laughs> Uh, do you think that we ever have a potential to really see a zone that feels like that too? Uh, like, oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, in the future, like we, we've dealt with the old gods on Azeroth, and according to Magni, like Azeroth has been cleansed of its corruption. There's always the chance of what we are being shown is not the right thing. Like from the very get go that you just step into Nihilofa, like that first boss fight is not actually what's happening here. Um, but at the same time, it is the story that presented to us. But the old yeah. gods come from a source, which is the Void Lords. And the Void Lords are still very much waiting out there. So if the old gods can already create such a magnificent tentacle paradise as we saw it, then just imagine what the realm of the Void Lords is going to be like. I, I've said this countless times as well. I really wanted the, this new expansion to be into the Void. I hope that we get that expansion <laughs> eventually. That that will be a wild expansion. Just like the idea of of going to to this realm where the the actual big bad is and having to deal with like a whole new reality. Like I just keep thinking of uh Doctor Strange or yeah, that's what it's called. Doctor mm -hmm. Strange and like Ant-Man when he like gets all tiny, gets like way too tiny and it's like, "Yo, what the <laughs> heck is this?" Like just zones like that. Uh the, the, I think that that is the threat that is most interesting to me still uh, to this moment. But for, for anybody who's like tuning in right now, it's like, man, I love WoW. I have no idea what's going on. What the heck happened in BFA? What's your TLDR to get people up to speed on, on, on the recap of, of BFA? For Battle for Azeroth, like a really quick one. Uh, Sylvanas <laughs> decided to start a war eventually she lost the war but not really because as it turns out while she was creating this war she was actually plotting behind the schemes with something called the jailer and the jailer has been feasting on all the souls that she killed and sent his way and now before anybody else even has access to covenants we find out that sylvanas already has a covenant and that's kind of what been battle for us have been like we made some friends along the way we saw some people die along the way and uh tentacles in between and, and you have uh a youtube video too that goes into detail on that war right it's called the the war of blood am i correct the this war the fourth war uh, the war of the forns or the the blood war yeah the blood war that's what it's called because there's like the whole answer of like the whole thing i could deep dive into what battle for Azeroth was about and we could talk about azurite and sargeras stab in the world and go through the patches but i think when it comes critically towards shadowlands we got to keep it on on sylvanas and what she's been doing i totally agree yeah the the main thing that i wanted to say with that too is uh i actually just got a chance to watch the video last night it's up on novel's youtube mm. channel definitely check it out
I uh, watched it with my stream and it was uh, it was a blast. I actually think that we still have five minutes of the video left. I'm a little bit of a pause champ. Uh, <laughs> I, I watched that video for about six hours. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and then also, I, w while I'm bringing that up, obviously, guys, you can watch uh, all all of Novel's lore videos on his YouTube channel. But also, I know your your Patreon has a bunch of stuff there too, as well, uh, which I'm going to be sinking my teeth into very soon. So, if you want to stay up to date with the lore, this is literally the man to go to. The best lore content always. But let's now kind of turn our eyes to everything going on with the jailer and all of that. Uh, obviously, in, in that war of blood, Sylvanas was doing some pretty wacky shit, even with her own troops, making sure a bunch of them died. That, that's empowering this jailer. Who the heck is this 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 mother chucker? Who who is the jailer? I wish I could tell you, but we don't know. <laughs> we have no idea, right? Like he's just we he's have... just some sort of deity. Yeah. Um. To to, to take this back, uh, there was a lot of speculation about who is the jailer, and they've actually come forth and said, like, look, it's really fun that you're speculating. Like, is this Arthas? Is this a Titan? But pretty much, the jailer is going to be a being, an entity that we haven't seen before, which is really, really awesome in my opinion. It's a lot, a lot more fun if something is kept in the shadows and be like, oh, what is this? What is the motivation? What's going on here? Um. So, what exactly the jailer is, we do not know. What is going on here is that you might remember from Sylvanas. Sylvanas uh, has been turned into the Banshee by Arthas the Lich King. And during WoW's time, classic up to the end of Wrath of the Lich King, Sylvanas was all about, I want my revenge, right? She wanted to kill the Lich King, which she did. And her mission was kind of over. And then the question became like, okay, what do we do with Sylvanas? What do we do with the Forsaken now? because their whole motivation and goal was done. And they decided to give her a, a beautiful sto short story, which is called Edge of Night. And in that short story, we can play uh, the video later of it as well, as we're watching the beautiful Shadowlands cutscene right now. Uh, but in that short story, we find out that Sylvana, she's had enough, like what, you know, what joy can be found in this, this afterlife of torment. She decided to jump off the top of Ice Crown and end it all. By doing so, uh, Sylvana's kind of ended up in hell or at least the Warcross version of it, whoops, um, which is most likely going to be the Maw. And in the Maw in Hell, she ended up in like this realm of torment. He was not having a good time. She even saw Arf's spirit there, like a little boy reaping the aftermath of a lifetime of mistakes. Sylvanas was not doing too well. And in come the beautiful Valkyr, those that were, you know, connected to the Lich King. And they offered her a deal. Like, we'll, we'll, place your, we'll take your place in Hell. We'll get you out of here. We'll even give you like the bonus lives. We'll give you the ability to create more Forsaken. We'll give you the ability to postpone your inevitable afterlife in hell. And Sylvanas took the deal. She got out of the mall, she got out of hell, and she's been doing her things since the Cataclysm. And now they've added with the Shadowlands that not only is this the moment where she made the bargain with the Valkyr, apparently this is also the moment that she came into contact with the Jailer. I, I was like, "Why?" It's this is the first time I've seen the cinematic in a little while, but uh, oh, it's good, eh? It, it, it's it's pretty wild. It, it's it's a very different feel of a cinematic in a lot of ways, and uh, also it's like one of those things where a lot of the times in the cinematics, you really don't care about who the characters are anymore. I, mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, oh, and, really? and okay. it, it's it's been kind of building up more and more to the point that I am starting to care a little bit about the characters. I mean, think about it. Some of the best cinematics, it's random, random people, right? The the first cinematic, random people. BC, random people. Then it's the what? the, the it, BC's random people, oh, right? Oh, oh, you mean like the characters that show up? Not my well, sort of. Or, or no, Three. BC, BC, you started to get Illidan in there, right? Then yeah, Wrath of Lich King. Like the Draenei in the BC trailer, that's actually Marat. Did you know that? When he puts the thing on his shoulder, he puts the mm -hmm. giant crystal hammer on his shoulder. That's Marat. I did not know that when I was like four. Yeah, however old I, I was. Found out later, that I was like, oh, yeah. cool. That's actually Marat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had no idea that it was. Eventually, I think that I had an inkling of an idea that it was. Uh, but yeah, I had no idea. Definitely, when I was when I was a kid, I was like, yo, they're just random people. I actually. I will say I was not hype at all during the BFA cinematic. The BFA cinematic just did not do it for me. I think that uh, that was the reason that this was refreshing too, was it didn't feel you had characters, but it wasn't a faction war. You know what I mean? Uh, I mm -hmm. just had, I have an aversion to the faction war. I had a question for you. 
I don't know what they're actually yeah. called. I think they're called oh, they're called the Cosmic Forces. Okay, it's actually in front of me when I pulled up the picture. So uh-huh. we get the introduction of the Cosmic Forces, right? With uh, with the book series when it comes out, the Chronicles. Yeah, uh, yeah. When Chronicles comes out, I'm pretty sure it's like it's a glossy in in the front of the page, right? Uh, or in the front of the book, and there are a bunch of different forces, cosmic forces. You got Shadow, mm-hmm. which we know the Void Lords are pretty much the big superpower of. You got the Arcane and Order, which is the Titans. Then you have uh-huh. the, the Light, which is, I'm pretty sure is like the, the Naru and all of that. Could the Jailer be the big bad of death? Like, is that what he is? Is he the leader of that entire cosmic force? Does each cosmic force have a deity that is its superpower? Uh, could be. But would the jailer be? Hang on. They gave us. Uh, I've actually made some notes as well before the show. They gave us a description of the jailer. Uh, but could he be like the uber force behind death? Yeah, it could be. I mean, at the same time, we don't know if like the titans are the uber beings behind death. They can always add more and more layers to it. But for now, he definitely seems to be like this massive character. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely. Uh... It's exciting because it's it's very unique. So we end up we, we we pretty much talked about that interstitching right between the two expansions and how you actually get from get from BFA over Shadowlands. And you, you already mentioned covenants and that Sylvanas has her covenant already. Mm-hmm. How are covenants going to to really fit into this story? Um, the covenants, pretty much how it works, and uh, we're kind of we're kind of skipping over the introduction, but I'm sure we're gonna get back to it. The way that yeah. works is that the Shadowlands is like this realm of infinite pockets, right? And depending on how you lived your life, how you found your demise, you are going to find your way to a specific pocket. Um, in the case of the zones that we're going to go to, like Bastion and Revendreth and Arnhemwald, each of them has like this this overruling government, this this little uh, order hall if you want to compare it to something and we are going to meet them in each and every single zone the way that they've uh, explained it is that your first time playing through this it's going to be a linear experience so we're all going to start in the same zone and then you're going to step through every single one of them in a line uh, whereas your alt you can pick and choose where you want to begin and what i like from the really really like from the testing area so far is that they give you like a taste of the story that's behind the covenant and it seems to be that if you want to see the conclusion of the story, you just better sign up with these guys, because otherwise you're not going to find out. Meaning that you'll at least want to get like four characters ready to go in order to see all the different storylines that they got going on. And how will these covenants play out? Um, anyone's guess at this point in time, like it's alpha, it's very much still in development. What seems to be going on is that the Jailer and his little ma thingy normally with the shadowlands you know you got these spirits they are judged they are sent to the little pockets and each spirit that ends up in the shadowlands they bring with them something called anima which is like the lifeblood of this world they need their anima but now that the jailer has been sucking in all these souls into his domain regardless of where they belong he's been stockpiling on that anima all the other ones are starving, which leads to conflict in this testing area that we have right now. We can see that the Kyrians in Bastion, those are like the blue angels, they're not doing too well. And the whole ritual and the whole process that's supposed to happen is a bit out of balance. And then the Maldrexians, which are like the undead dudes, they show up and they're like, hey, we notice you're in a bit of a pickle. We notice you're not really strong right now. Let us just take your stuff and your anima and we'll just take your domain. And that seems to be going on. Like there's infighting in the zones itself. There's fighting between the different covenants. And we get to decide like which one do we sign up with? Is it the edgy vampire lords? Is it the beautiful druid area? Is it the blue smurfs? Is it uh, oh, which one is the fourth one? Oh yeah, the Meldrexians, the undead ones. Who do we want to sign up with? Which story intrigues us the most? Which abilities intrigue us the most? Which rewards are the best? And once you've signed up with them, you're going to uh, earn your way through the ranks. You're going to stand with them. And then it's everybody's question. Like, okay, what are we going to do with this storyline? I kind of got the feeling that we need to get these covenants back in order and point them towards the actual threats. Rather than having them fight each other, point them towards the Maw and have them unite against the Maw. But that's purely my own guess. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I, one of the reasons that I brought up covenants 
so prematurely. I, I'm known to prematurely jump the jump the gun, but I I, uh-huh. I will say with covenants, it he just bring up so many questions to me, right? Uh, gameplay wise, uh, and also just how the the story is going to be delivered. I'm nervous about them in pretty much every capacity. Uh, I, I think that. There is a big opportunity there, and Ian's really defended it already with the, the idea that, hey, you actually get to make your character yours again, right? You, you make a big decision. I, I understand the appeal of that. I, I understand why that's something he's been so adamant about. Uh, but at the same time, I felt like a lot of the sloppiness with the lore that happened in BFA, a lot of the reasons that it, it made like very little sense at times to me when I was actually just mm. playing the game itself what, was because of the way that decisions were made and how those decisions impacted how the story was told uh, already. What, what you said about the zones being linear the first time you play through them is incredible. That, that sounds like a really good thing. The war campaign though, I thought it was a very bad narrative delivery. I, I felt like the war campaign did not uh, accomplish things very well. And also the splits mm-hmm. between Alliance and Horde this time, I felt more confused narratively than ever because of it. And I look at covenants and I go, wait, am I going to play a covenant? And I'm going to make that big choice of what my character is, who my character is, and just have no idea what's going on in the world at all. Do you think that covenants right now, novel, do you think it will be a good device for delivering narrative? Or do you think that the confusion that I'm scared of might actually come to bear fruit? Uh, it's going to depend on how they implement them. It's, it's a really good question, though. Um, it, it kind of depends, like, how did you feel back in Legion where everybody had their own order halls, yet the global story still went in the same direction? Um, like, at the I, end of the I day, thought order if halls you were ex- incredible. Yeah. And, and then it, they could deliver it like that. At the end of the day, it's, uh, if you're going to want to experience all the storylines, it appears you're going to have to play four different characters in order to see the full covenants and whatnot. But the global story is most likely still going to be the same. You're going to have your individual order hall, right? Like my character is a blue smurf Kyrian. We are the noble ones. We got the beautiful white wings behind us. And then somebody who might feel more connected to the Maldrexians is like, no, 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 no. We got like the bone wings going on. Or uh, I'm, I'm carrying my own tombstone with my own sins on my back. But then the global story could still very much be the same. You'll have your own individual pockets to play through and then the global story to go through. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that when you point it out that way, there are some things to be optimistic about. I, I really do think from a visual perspective, I, I, I've actually already said, I, I think from a visual perspective, they should maybe even go a step further with these uh covenants i i think it would be mm. awesome if every single spell you had was affected by your covenant like if every single Ooh, particle it's effect, order to deliver though it's such a huge order but that's the thing i ask for like really big impossible shit and, and just kind of hope that it's gonna happen uh I'll, and even I'll if i get a little with bit them. I'll settle with them balancing it out proper. I My major concern when it comes to Covenants is that we're going to see damage differences similar to Void Gear. And if that happens, it's going to be... Uh, oh, that's 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 my major co- concern when it comes to Covenants. But if they make it more like racial abilities, where the difference is like 1% or 2%, then who cares, right? Like the top end raiders for Methods, they're really in a pickle because they got to figure out like which Covenants is actually going to deliver the most. For the average player, it doesn't really matter in that regards. But if the difference is like Void Gear, which is like absolutely massive, I think the ability should not uh, offer such a massive difference that you're actually feeling forced to be part of a covenant. If you really want to make it a choice, if you really want to make your character your own again, then let that be more uh, of a cosmetic change rather than abilities. Yeah, I, I do like the idea of like the big cosmetic impact. But yeah, I feel the same way uh, about power. And uh, I- I'm hoping that they really do use soul binds to kind of shore up some of those. But ba- back to the lore, all in all, uh, <laughs> we definitely did skip uh, a few big things. And I- I'm going to kind of leave it up to you where we start. I-, I know right now the area we can probably deep dive the most would be Bastion because of the alpha. But uh, if there's anything before Bastion that you really do want to cover, we can jump in there as well. Uh, let's go a little bit before that. And if we want, okay. by the way, we can play out the uh, Edge of Night video. Um, so I've mentioned before that we had the whole Sylvanas dropping herself from the top of Ice Crown, and she got in touch with the Jailer. And from that point on, she um, somehow, some way, has been working 
with the um i think you're starting the video at the end but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's at the start i don't even remember it doesn't matter um so sylvanas she got in touch with the jailer and over time we've seen her be pushed from somebody who works in the shadows right constantly trying to avoid the afterlife to somebody pushed to the forefront mainly at legion where war chief Vol'jin was slain on the broker shore and some voice whispered to him to make sylvanas the war chief he took that opportunity to lead the Horde into the new faction war with Battle for Azeroth, where the burning of Teldrassil, a lot of people were like, oh dear, that's a lot of toasted night elves. Um, and all those souls have been sent to the Maw. The question is, at this point in time, like exactly how long has been the Maw uh, out of this order? How long have the souls been sucked in there, drained there? And we can pretty safely say that the Burning Crusade is still an okay area, as we know that Kill for Sunstrider just ended up at the right realm. But then it's up for grabs. Like, has every fallen since Wrath the Lich King been sent to the Maw? That opens up such storytelling potential as to what we're going to see there. Um, so yeah, over time, she's been sending souls to the Jailer and the Little Covenant, as I mentioned before, because it increased her power. So much so that she was able to 1v1 Sourfang and one-shot him. So much so that she's been able to overpower someone like Bolvar the Lich King and, and steal the Helm of Domination. And a lot of people were quite upset about that. Like, oh, look at people Sylvanas. Were pissed. <laughs> people were pissed. Right? Pissed, it's like, look at Sylvanas just making Bolvar her little, you know. But now they actually <laughs> gave it a reason. As in, yeah, but she has this thing going on behind, behind the scenes. There is a reason to it. So with Bolvar on his knees, the Helm of Domination ripped open. He assumes that she wants to put on the helmet and gain more power. But no, 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 no. The Banshee Queen is going to set us free from something. Who knows what her motivations are at this point. All we know is that the helmet is ripped open, the, the sky above her explodes, the veil between this world and the next is rippled open. And if you go to ICC right now, you can actually see that beautiful orange sky. Um, and that is where it all begins. Now, some way, somehow... We too are going to follow her into the Shadowlands. Details are not revealed quite yet. It could be that Bolvar is just going to sound the horn and be like, Champion, the veil has been lifted. Come help me. Could very well be a thing. Mm -hmm. All the same, we go in there and we end up at the Ma as well. And being the super duper heroes that we are, we're actually able to escape. There are some that are going to be left behind, which they mentioned in like an interview. Uncertain who actually going to hang out with the jailer all that time. All the same, we end up at the Ma. We're able to escape something that has never been done before, but you know, we're awesome. And we start our adventure into the Shadowlands. Wait, is that is that like the the pre-quest then probably? Or like maybe even pre-patch, like escaping from the Ma? You think um, the pre patch apparently is going to be like a, another scourge invasion? At least that's what I've been told. Uh, but if we look at the shadow right. testing or the shadow lens testing right now, uh, the moment you end up in the first zone, they mention like, "Oh, champion, where did you come from?" And we tell them like, "Look, we've been to the Maw. Things are not good. We need to tell you." And they're like, "No, no, 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 no. Just do our little thing. Go, go kill five beasties." But we're like, "No, man. There's something going on in the Maw. So it's going to be part of your introductionary experience, kind of like." Um, Kedkar teleporting Dalaran to the Broca Shore, for example. Okay. Yeah, so I actually don't have Alpha yet, so I haven't gotten to play Bastion, so everything I've gotten from quests is like actually just like picking it out from other people's streams. That's why I was saying I'm super behind on Bastion. Uh, I got most of my lore, actually, from Preach, because uh, I, I just kept watching him do quests over and over again. No! As I... My heart. Uh, that was all I got. Uh, he happened to be streaming at all the right times, so I would just pop in, and I was just like, I was just like, okay, preach, what's going on here? And, and he'd be like, oh, this bloody blah blah blah. I was like, oh, I don't know what the heck is going on right now. <laughs> like, like preach's preach's lore is definitely not his strong suit. Uh, I've yeah. done a quiz with Mike. I've done a quiz where oh, where he just came up with characters. Talking lore with him is an amazing, amazing experience, let me tell you. Dude, I love that man so much. He is so good <laughs> at filling in gaps in the lore with just nothing. Like I, he's so good at just like he he'll he'll miss something and he'll just fill that gap himself. Uh with, Easy. with with uh with what I saw from from Bastion. It has a pretty cool vibe 
It's like very much uh, the good place cult drink the kool-aid kind of vibe yeah. i was about to say you say the good place but hmm, maybe not so much there is um, like there's like this sitcom called the good place with uh god what are they it's it's that one chick and that one dude a pretty bad description wow. ted danson ted danson and i don't want to do any spoilers but it's like oh we're in uh we're in the good place but then like you're like oh wait are they kind of thing and it's like four mm -hmm. or five seasons long and it's uh, a that zone reminds me of that show so far quite a lot yeah and and uh for the design like a lot of people recognize stuff from like the halls of valor from uh legion with odin and whatnot uh not surprising because odin is quite a copycat this is actually the place where he learned about the valkyr and uh, how to make them for himself. So this is like the birthplace of the Valkyrie as well. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, Kool-Aid. It's I'm actually surprised with how invested I got into this storyline. I just expected it to be like, okay, you die a heroic death. Hello, champion. Welcome to the greatest place to find yourself in, in the Shadowlands. But no, there's actually a really cool philosophical question as to, okay, so you passed on into the afterlife and now they're taking away who you were, they're taking away your emotions, your memories in order to help you pass on to your next role, which might be you become a Valkyr or you do something else. And some of them are not down with that. Some of them have too much doubt inside of them. Some of them are not strong enough. There's a bit of a Ma influence. But some of them are like, nah, 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 this, this might not just be the way. And they turn into the purple Smurfs and then they go away and they create their own little faction. And that's kind of the conflict that you see going on in this area. It's beautiful. It's, it's way more invested than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it, it's like cinematic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like taking a peek right now. I, I'm watching with delay right now, so I'm like a little bit behind on it. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 one of those things where I, I was like, I, the second that I was watching shit with that zone, I was like, man, it's like being an XQC's chat, you know, like slowly and slowly. By, by the end, you're just a husk that's like PP laugh, PP jam. Like you can't help it; you, it just whittles you down. Uh, which I thought was pretty cool. I I, I really do like that zone. Uh, I actually want to pull up a map too, so I can start thinking about like big picture as well with Bastion. Uh, were, were there any things in particular when you got to play through the zone that you were like, th "This is a strong way to tell the story"? Like, did it feel different than any other zone that that we've had as far as how they start to to bring up these topics? No. Okay, not so yet. It, but then I would say like this is Shadowlands Alpha, so it is really soon to tell. Um, like there's no voice acting yet, in-game cutscenes are not quite there yet, uh, the questing as far as I've experienced it, and I haven't finished the zone myself either, but what I've experienced in the questing so far, it's like it's, you know, questing as we know it, uh, purely graphical speaking it definitely stands out, like I've been taking screenshots of people like, any kind of screenshots you take here, I could use as a desktop uh, screensaver, and like yeah that is true, it's absolutely beautiful but uh, too soon to tell if this is actually going to blow you away. If you pay attention to what they're saying, if you pay attention to what's going on, as well as, of course, the cameo of none other than Ufer the Lightbringer, um, yeah, that starts dragging you in. But it definitely still needs work. You can definitely tell, like, this is alpha stuff, yeah. In my opinion. You know what confuses the, the heck out of me, too, though, is, uh, like, I kind of get it, but... I didn't get to play the game, so I wasn't sure if there were any hints of it. When, when you look at the map uh, and everything's like completely separated, right? Uh, how how is this all connected? Like this this realm? Oh, um, and for those wondering, by the way, this is handmade by Kalis. It's called Edge of Night, and it's gorgeous. Um, the way it works is if you die, you first go to Orbos, which is like your. It's going to be your new capital. There you meet something called uh, the Arbiter. And the Arbiter is like this, this creature that, that looks at your soul and within a flash second, they can judge who you are, what you were, and where you belong. From there, you're sent off to whatever pocket dimension in the Shadowlands you belong to. Uh, they are connected to one another. As I mentioned before, Maldraxxus is able to invade something like uh, Bastion, but they are their little pocket dimensions, so to say. Yeah, so like wormholes basically is how you get like you get to them. Like that that was the thing that I was like it's like it's actually interdimensional travel to get from zone to zone. I mean, we are talking about literally walking in the afterlife. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah so yeah. any reason how you tr are transported between them 
closer to here, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. So I, I just wanted to highlight that. Like, it's going to feel different. Other expansion zones, right? Like, as we actually move through it, like there, there's some real potential here for it to be just like you said, wild, uh, basically. Mm. Uh, like, like, it can feel really wild. Everybody's uh, looking forward to the Castlevania area, that's for sure. And uh, the designs of the zones are gorgeous. Yeah, they are not directly interlinked with roads or whatnot, like in the past. Um, mm -hmm. You're definitely going to be teleporting and jumping over. Uh, and in each zone, like the art team, I think we can all agree that the art team over the years is not disappointed. And this time around, with what we've seen so far and the armor designs, they're they're just taking it to the next level. It's insane. Yeah, I was really hyped in Sloot's when Sloot interviewed Ian. Mm -hmm. Ian. Ian said the art team really wants to do tier sets again, and <laughs> hearing the art team have any sort of influence in the game like being like no we need to bring this back because we can do so much with it hyped me up so much right because i i do feel like tier tier in the past has felt like a really big world builder for me too like a ludic mm -hmm. element that actually backs up the narrative uh you think back to you know obviously a lot of people weren't crazy about dragon soul uh in a lot of ways but when, when you think about those tier sets I felt like it was such a cool class identity moment, uh, how those tier sets actually looked. And I, I don't know. I, I really like I really like the idea that we're going to get gear like that. Uh, I like all of the things that are happening with the art team with Covenants as well. Like that is the one thing about Covenants that is really seeming strong. And these zones, to me, seem like they have such a high level of variance. They look incredibly mm. beautiful. I, I'm very excited for it. Have you checked out the new data mined armors and models and whatnot? I've seen a few of them. I'm actually going to pull them up right now. Uh, I, I saw like, so as of right now, there's no tier sets, right? It's just, uh, it's just going to be plate for the first one. Uh, I think they call it like mod gear, raid gear, and it's got like cloth and leather. I don't know if they're tier sets or not. Yeah. Uh, Ian said that in the probably interview for different... too. Mm. He, he basically said like, there's no plans for tier sets for the first tier. But then after okay. that, there's a pretty big chance. Uh, so yeah, like as of right now, I'm pretty sure it's still uh, based off of armor proficiency. I'm trying to see where I can actually pull up that link with with all the stuff. The the plate gear there actually looks sick as heck. It actually looks so good. I was lower to the white variation. Is there? Oh, have you seen this animated? Dude, there should be a button like showing a model viewer. It's so good. But all of the sets, like I don't know which which of the artists in the team actually play cloth wielders, but whoever they are, they have a <laughs> they have a very nice taste. I have not seen a cloth set that I disliked so far. I've always felt that way a way about cloth too. I feel like cloth is always the the proficiency that doesn't miss. I like, actually totally agree with you, and, and like you know what I like about the cloth gear too. They're, mm -hmm. they're always like, you know what. We won't stick to making it look clothy. If it's yeah. gonna, like, like they're, they're like, if it doesn't look sick, like, like all I care about is sick. They're like, yeah, we'll make this cloth gear cloth gear that's actually made out of metal. We do not give a flying hoot nanny. And I've always been down with that. I've always been down. Like the amount of times that it looks like you're wearing like full battle armor as a, as a cloth wielder. And then your little tag just says cloth, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I actually get the link too, so I can pick through some of these. I actually haven't seen the closet yet, so this is actually the big moment that I see the closet. Oh in. man, there, there's this, uh, this Sphinx kind of outfit, and if you put it on like a a, a worgen, they actually look like Egyptian cloths. It's insane. Wait, like look, what? look at this ridiculousness. You could be a Power Ranger. Look at it. Wait, how the heck do I find the cloth? Do they? Oh, they have the cloth up now. Oh my god! This is the, this is the big moment for me. I, I, at the beginning of every expansion, I always level my warlock first, even though I'm not necessarily as much of a warlock man as I have been in the past. Mm, it's so good! It's so good with the little helmet that looks similar to what the jailer uh, had in the cinematic. Yeah, for a first set too, it really is mm -hmm. strong. Even the weapons and such, like a freaking nature scythe that you're like, oh yeah. 
Yeah, well, in the letter sets. Yeah, I've, letter. Mm, I've seen one of them that, in my opinion, was really good. And apparently, all the comments were like, "Nah, nah, nah, this is trash." I was like, "Oh, sorry." I leather is like <laughs> always the one, right? I feel like everybody always hates on leather. I could be wrong, but I feel like people always hate on leather. I, mm. I'm trying to remember cool leather sets. Do I have Atlas loot on this? Oh no, I don't anymore. I, I'm like trying oh, to think cool of cool leather sets. Just immediately goes back to classic. But even Drenor had like the um, armor set that you could get from like the bunker business that looked pretty cool. ICC had that rogue set, the fiend one, where you had like a sack over your head and like the one eye looking out. That that one was pretty cool. I, I like that one a lot. Uh, I'm trying to think though, like cool. Oh, wasn't there that one leather set from like Alakir? too that was uh yeah like tornadoes on your shoulders and shit and like lightning eyes all right that, that was pretty badass i'm pretty sure that was from alec here i could be wrong I, but i think cataclysm chet there is, was some good chet is like no no no. you mean mill mate mill doesn't get the things maybe really I mean, though if you look if you look like at the ardenwald cloth gear like that looks better than the druid gear and like ardenwald is the the home of of like nature and stuff and like what doesn't mean that it's bad. As a pe- as a plate wielder for Arnwald, you can look like an owl boy. Like how great is that? Yeah, I was definitely wrong. It definitely did not drop from Alakir, by the way. Oh wait, it's okay. am I, wait, am I in the Alakir? Uh, this is this is the right Alakir, but I made up that it dropped from Alakir. I do not remember where it drops. It, he oh he does drop tier. Maybe it was the tier helm. I don't even remember. Mm-hmm. Um, I digress. <laughs> yeah, being a, being a clothy is the shit. You usually look awesome. I feel like male gear when it hits, it really hits. Like there's some iconic hunter gear. There's some good ass shaman gear too. Back in the day, uh, I even feel like I, I mean I, I'm just anti the trial of the crusader kind of. You have a proficiency, get this proficiency set. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that, mm-hmm. and I really do hope that they are going to deviate away from it. But I don't mind that happening during the first tier. I kind of like the idea of the first tier being a little bit more uniform and then you get more and more because that gives you something to work for. I feel like the progression feels really good. But uh back mm. to back to the lore. I've, I'm all over I'm so excited <laughs> novel for I'm That's so fine. It's alpha for days. For We're going to be all over the place anyways. It's fine. Oh, it's so good, man. It's so good. Uh so we, we talked about Bastion a little bit. What do we know about some of the other zones? Uh what what, what do we already have kind of moving around our head? Let me uh, open up the mel- map real quick. Okay, so besides Bastion, which is like the, the birthplace of the Valky, we have Arnwald. And Arnwald has been described as, you know about the Emerald Dream where and the Emerald Nightmare and whatnot, like the whole nature bit? Yeah. Um, it's been described where as the Emerald Dream would be like spring and summer, Arnwald is like fall and winter. Meaning that creatures like uh, Scenarius, for example, he was killed in Warcraft 3 by Gromash, but then he returned to Azeroth. Like, what was going on there? Apparently, when a creature like that, so heavily tied, connected to nature, um, if it dies, it goes to Ardenwald, it gets ready for its rebirth, and then it goes back to the dream and eventually back to Azeroth. Wow. Um, that's, like, that's like such a beautiful way of saying it. I hadn't heard that yet. Like, the idea of... Uh... Like the different seasons of Ardenwall. Mm, uh, that's how they pronounced it at BlizzCon, for how they actually announced it. I was like, ooh, that sounds really good. And there is a mod there called like the Winter Queen. Oh, her model is just amazing. It looks so good, as well as the armor sets. But sorry, aesthetics. Um, so lore-wise, I think there's also going to be a little bit of storytelling with like the Drusvar that we met in uh, Battle for Azeroth. Like yeah. Gorak Tool and... and um, the tree guys and whatnot, so I'm hoping to see like a little bit more storytelling uh, connected to that. And yeah, that's going to be more like the, the nature fairy zone. Then there is... Um, sorry, let's do it actually in order. Like We don't know what the linear order is going to be quite yet. At least I don't think the Blizzard has given us a full-blown order. But the way we kind of figured it out is Bastion we start out in, and Revendreft is going to be the end. So it's either Arnwald or Maldrexus that goes off the Bastion, right? And considering that Maldrexus invades Bastion... Oh, I can actually see on the map that they've added levels to it. Never mind. Maldrexus is followed by Bastion. And Maldrexus is like the um, Scourge Necropole area. Anything that you might have loved about Wrath the Lich King, about the Lich King, will be found in this place. Um, they are the fighting force of the Shadowlands. If you're looking for an army then this is the place where you will find it. 
And in this domain, might is right. This is where spirits uh, that are like going off the power or very strong spirits, they will make their way here. Doesn't matter if they're good or evil, because they've given us an example, as in Draka, Frost Mother. She's going to be one of the spirits that actually is going to show up here. Similar to how Ufer shows up in the Bastion, this is where you're going to see uh, Draka pop up. Okay. Man, I, 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 uh, uh, now I'm caught up on Ardenwall. I'm sorry that 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 zone. I so I actually <laughs> didn't get to watch all of the 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 BlizzCon announcements themselves because I was casting. So mm-hmm. uh, usually what happens is I get back and I, I watch it all secondhand. But everybody had already made so many videos about it that I just watched people's videos right because uh, it, it just seemed quicker and I liked the commentary. But now I'm like, mm-hmm. damn, Ardenwall already looked sick. But now I'm thinking about all the potential and stuff for that. Uh, the stag melt, the Ardenwall stag melt looks really cool as well. Uh, so so each zone exists, has its own flavor, has its own mm-hmm. kind of uh, it, it, its own covenant associated with it as well. And yep. now we know kind of how we're going to move through the story. I, I'm curious, though, because you've mentioned that uh, if you level a second character, you can mm-hmm. decide things. Uh, do you think that with that, does that mean that that, that character is going to experience uh, like a large amount of scaling uh, as far as far as things go? And then you're, you're going to be able to hop around or is it going to be? Uh, I imagine bit- so. Like the details of it are not uh, not fully explained quite yet. But I imagine that I, I remember something about if you have picked like a, a covenant on your main character, then you can do something to work towards your next covenant. But details of that are not quite clear. But they have the technology in order to make it all flexible in it. So if they want yeah. you to go into Revendred first, you can. That that is that is a really weird but potentially cool thing. I, I also like the fact that. We're gonna get that heavier investment in the 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 linear story that actually is probably gonna be able to tell the story a little bit better to everybody the first time around. Uh, mm-hmm. w- with the covenants, though, like you said, I feel like in a lot of ways this expansion is just hinting at being much more alt friendly, and not only more oh, alt friendly. Oh so. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been terrible to to play alts, right? I, I feel like in Legion, Legion was obviously alt unfriendly as well, right? There were a lot of systems that were alt unfriendly, but when you got to the very end. There was this glorious moment where it was like, yo, you're going to get a completely different nugget for each of your alts. Like all of a sudden it was like, wait, I get to do all the order halls. I get to do, which was cool for, in, in for, for quite a few of them. And then you had the mage towers. So you had that gameplay aspect as well. Uh, that was I, that was some of the most fun that I had in Legion was uh, those mage Legion towers. Legion was experience. insane at that amount. The amount of content that they put in Legion with the individual order halls and the mount quest and the artifacts and the mage tower like you mentioned it was insane insane i i I think that uh you know i i got made fun of for being a huge legion stand throughout the entirety of the expansion being like no this thing's actually pretty sick we got it pretty good right now i'm kind of nervous to to leave this expansion i loved legion uh legion was amazing a lot of people uh, didn't like it at the time and now uh, have have very much come around and been like, it's not so bad. Come back, Legion, please. Uh, <laughs> you don't know I, how good you have it until you see Battle for Azeroth, eh? <laughs> right, right. It, I, but I, I'm like, I'm kind of curious. Did you feel, not, not to go too far down this, but this is just kind of how I felt. Uh, and if you don't want to go into it, that's totally fine. When I got to the last raid tier, and was actually in that area as i already mentioned that was wanting mm-hmm. to be in I, I wanted to really experience this this giant empire did you feel like some stuff got cut uh as far as gameplay and also storytelling like did you because i i felt like in a way that i had never felt before craft like in legion i was like wow we're getting so much story we're getting so much we're getting so much when i got to the very end of bfa i was like man it feels like they just ended up not following through uh, on some of the story and maybe just started investing into everything a little bit earlier on on uh, the Sh- Shadowlands front. I, f- I think Battle for Azeroth, uh, I-, I remember people asking me when they announced it and release date, people asked me like, no, but do you think it's ready? Like, isn't this too soon? I was like, I don't know. I'll trust Blizzard in thinking like we have a release date, so it must be ready, yeah? Um, I changed my mind on that. I don't think Battle for Azeroth was ready to go when they released it. 
And the whole final chapter with Nyalova and Nazov, in my opinion, they should have saved that for either the next expansion or, as we mentioned earlier, like just begin the expansion with that, but it was too late. Uh, Nazov and Nyalova feels like an afterthought. You deal with an old god released from its chains in like one single patch. Like what? Yeah, yeah. I, I've uh, I've said this a million times before too. I'm like a big advocate of you know bad guys should be on the box uh, because even when you talk about the storytelling methods that existed in, I, I felt like the strongest it felt to me really the the strongest it felt to me was probably uh, Wrath in, in a lot of ways. They they've done a good job of it in other times as well. But when you were in Wrath, you looked at that box. You know, my 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 dad drove me to the video game store. We stood in line. We're waiting to get Wrath of Lich King. I get that box. And I go, Dad, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. And he was like, <laughs> my dad, who didn't play WoW at all, went, he looks pretty strong, dude. He looks pretty tough. I was like, I know. I know. <laughs> and you start questing. And all of a sudden, he pop- the, the, the Lich King pops up. And he's just like, yo, what's up, you little bitch? Like, I'm going to destroy your shit. Mm-hmm. And then he like, walks away. And you're like, oh. No, and you get into the next zone, he's there again. You're getting into dungeons, he's there. And this guy is just taunting you the whole time. And you could not stop. You couldn't stop. You know, like new new uh patch comes out, and, and you, you know, you had been in the old one for a little while, you had already gotten the raid down, you already got your best in sight. You're like, man, maybe I should just take a break, maybe I should go outside. And then, then the Lich King's like, Yo, yeah, you gonna quit? <laughs> I knew it, dude. And you're like, No, I'm coming back, I'm gonna destroy your shit. And that was powerful. And you know what happened when I finally got an ICC and got him down, it's still, and I, I'm not saying this in like a dramatic sense at all. I, I'm really not saying this in, it is truly one of the best moments of my life when I killed the Lich King. Uh, there were a lot of things going on with like server first and things <laughs> like that, but I felt genuinely this sense of the achievement. It wasn't excitement, right? Like there, there was mm. excitement when I got my legendary items in Legion. I didn't feel accomplished. I didn't feel rewarded. I felt that quick hit of dopamine where I was like, I pulled the slot machine and quarters are flying out of my face. Woo! Like, felt, it, it felt good. Don't get me wrong. It was exciting. But killing the Lich King was rewarding. I had worked for that for so long. I remember going into school the next day. I always tell this story. My buddy Jeff from high school was in my, we grew up together. One of my best friends. He, we, we, went, we went to school together. And I remember seeing him in the hallway the day after. And like we knew, we knew. The only other time that I remember, like that moment where I was like, "Oh, you become a man, have you?" <laughs> yep, yep. It was like that. But the only other time that we, besides killing the Lich King, that we had that moment where it was like we knew, but not everybody else at the school knew, was when he got Valnir. He was he was a healer, and when he got Valnir, mm. it was a very big deal as well. And I remember going into school the next day, and I was like. Man, I don't think all these people know how big your cock is, Jeff. Like, I was like, yeah, like everybody. Uh, that was such a profound thing. And that's really also one of the things that, that started to get me into the lore. Even when I took my break, you know, I started digging around asking a bunch of these questions. And, and, and now all of a sudden I'm in a place where like, I'm, I have for years have frequented your YouTube channel. Like I've, I've read Chronicle. Uh, I talk about lore all the nice. time. Like it's something, it's something that I genuinely love uh, in the game. And the also way that actually started in Wrath of the Lich King. Funny. What'd you say? I also but, started uh, getting into it in Wrath of the Lich King. But for me, it wasn't for the death of the Lich King. For me, it was the Wrath Gates, like one of the first in-game cinematics. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ooh, what's going on here? But if you loved like the Lich King showing up or whatnot, they do seem to be going back to it. Because I remember them at some point, they mentioned like, yeah, some of the feedback that we got about the Lich King was that he was too much in your face and people didn't like that. Now with the whole Shadowlands thing. It appears that the Shadowlands, that the Jailer is actually the Emboss. So it appears that they are going with the whole Raw of the Lich King setting of in, you're going to meet the Emboss right away. It's not a surprise. It's not a, you know, this is this is what you get. And I'm curious to see how much the Jailer is actually going to be playing his part. If the model that's been data mined is actually the Jailer, he's going to be massive. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I, I think that, that that is really cool. Like, I, I, I really do. I... I... I just think having goals are so important in this game and it creates a world that feels real. Uh, I think that there's potential to have a lot of those goals that you set with yourself with your covenant, but having the, and, and also there's always the goal of power gain, right? Like power, power gain is always a goal for, for a lot of people. It's less so for, for some, 
uh, and then you set your own achievements, whether it's, you know, I want to do X, Y, Z in a mythic plus, I want to level all of these alts, but the story should also be a goal. And yeah, it might not be the forefront for every single player, but if the story can serve as a thing that actually drags people along, pulls them in and gets them more and more invested in the game, that's when uh, I, I feel like stuff is really winning. And I, I like the idea of knowing who that big bad is and knowing every step that I take is getting me closer to fucking his shit up. Uh, I really do like You're that. Welcome. Dude, I and feel I like the jailer is a cool boss too. Like, he could be like if this is if this is truly is the guy because it's still a bit up in the air like is this the actual guy because considering how big he is and whatnot and of course like the chains that you can see on his uh, arms similar to how the only thing is he doesn't look like um, we saw him in the Shadowlands trailer and uh, if you look closer you can also see that he has like a gaping hole where his heart is supposed to be so people are like what is going on here? Why doesn't he have a heart? Did the Arbiter take it? Did he take it out himself in order to free himself of the Shadowlands control? Why is the Jailer actually the Jailer? Who is this guy? Why did he get this role? Why is he dealing with Sylvanas? Is he just bored? Is he playing a Ryuk and he's giving her the Death Note? Or is he trying to just break the wheel that is the afterlife? Like, why... Is the Arbiter allowed to judge your soul? Why should the Shadowlands be as it is today? There are so many really cool philosophical questions about this Jailer. Besides, you know, he is the bad guy and he wants to destroy the universe. And I really hope that they're going to... Uh, that they're going to dive into, like, okay, this is the bad guy. He's right up in your face. And then over time, you're going to figure out, like, like in Bastion, you think at first glance, like, ooh, Angel Heaven, this is great. And you learn that there's, like, a subplot where people are not down with what's going on. I'm hoping that every single zone is going to show off something like that, and then we're going to find out more about the Jailer. Like, okay, why is he doing what he's doing? What is going on here? There's a lot to work here. You're getting me so hype! <laughs> I'm, I'm getting so hype right now! Oh my god! Like, the, like these are these are like the real stories that you know, like you have those that you have those those moments. Like, I, I remember one of the first ones for me where I really like lost my shit was Broxigar. Uh, as a character where I was like, yo, this is so insanely cool. Uh, like, I'm so all in on it. Uh, I remember watching watching your video on that. And then, I, you know, when all of a sudden we had all those developments with, uh, with the lore, with, um, with Chronicle, I got really into it as well. But when you start drawing parallels like Death Note and things like that and all of these really <laughs> crazy, I mean, th those are, they're, they're straight up just wild stories. They're, they're wild stories where you know, it opens up over time. You get more and more. It's not just... I, I didn't feel that way in Battle for Azeroth. I didn't feel like I, I was ever... I, I never felt like stuff was opening up. Uh, at, at the very end... It's a bit of... Let's, I'm, I'm not going to rip on completely on Battle for Azeroth. There were definitely moments that were really well done. Like, some of the best storytelling, in my opinion, has been uh, when it comes to, like, the Jaina storyline. Like, the Pride of Kaltiris, where she uh, reflects on her past life. Yeah, maybe if you only play Horde, you don't really see that. Uh, see, but there's that was also, the problem. <laughs> mm, there like, was also I, the Bonsamdi to Lunchy storyline that they played around with. I, Bonsamdi was the best, like, some of the best storytelling for me. Like, all, all of mm. the stuff, when, when you actually have Bonsamdi, like, he was, he was a huge thing that uh, did make me interested. I, I enjoyed seeing his character. Uh, I, I really liked a lot of that narrative and I, I also at the end now with all of this stuff that is happening with sylvanas i'm starting to get invested in, right like the, the it is getting me excited the the new stuff is getting me really 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 hyped uh i i love like these ideas though about the jailer and not really knowing what, what the <laughs> heck is going on with him i i did not know uh, a lot of that was even being asked i didn't know that there were questions being asked about the jailer uh the whole what do you think the hole in his chest is not not to not to do the conspiracy theory thing but what, what do you think's going on with the jailer oh uh it's it's so hard to say and uh did, what actually what actually sparked like the spark of imagination of okay what is going on here was that there was recently an interview with telly Essen and and one of the blizzard designers and they were actually touching upon these little things like you know, this is a Jailer, new character, what about Arthas? Um, but since the guy has no hearts, and we currently have a Battle for Azeroth artifact called the Heart of Azeroth, imagine like that chest opening up and just being like Kirby and eating that necklace so that everybody gets rid of their necklace, or the necklace is going to be bargained or used to get ourselves out of the moss, something like that. Could be potential. Um, I'm personally hoping that we're going to uncover a feud between the Arbiter and the Jailer.
Like the jailer is supposedly this big bad guy in the mall we don't want to end up with. And the arbiter is supposed to be like this overruling government. And I'm hoping that as we're going to learn more about these different covenants and what their views are on the Shadowlands and what their rules are and their orders, like who gives who gives the arbiter the right? Where did the arbiter come from? And I'm hoping that there's going to be like a dialogue, uh, a balance, like a yin yang kind of thing between the arbiter and the jailer. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, it, it's one of those things as well too, where I, I can just see something like that opening up so much storytelling for the entire big picture, the big picture of the the universe of, of WoW Tell and also the Azure. big picture, by the way. We uh, we were spitballing about Shadowlands the other day and, and the effects that it's going to have on the Warcraft universe, right? So in, in, in Azeroth, in the world, people are aware of, you know, certain cultures have certain ideas about what happens when you die. Like the, the Tauren and the humans and the Naru. Like there were always ideas of what would happen. But with the Shadowlands, we now literally have adventurers that go into the Shadowlands. They learn about these covenants and they're going to uncover the secrets as to how you're supposed to live in order to end up at certain spaces in the Shadowlands. Oh so st- say that that information comes back to Azeroth, right? Imagine that you're a random person in the world, and you learn that if you're naughty, you end up at Revendreft, and they're going to be like vampires spanking you. You die heroically. And oh man, die. so I just gotta be naughty, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you get to end up at like Bastion. So instead, if, if they want to play around with it, most likely won't happen, but if they want to play around with it, you're going to see very cult-like behavior. And people are going to reflect the cults that we see in the Shadowlands on Azeroth itself. You are going to find a society that no longer just lives out their lives, going to live their lives with an eye on the afterlife. It's mental to contemplate that, okay, we're actually going to get confirmation, 100% instructions on how the Shadowlands work, which is just, oh, I, 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 I can't so, wait. Yeah, that's so wild. I, I, I mean, I wonder how that affects stuff too because like there's like a lot of isn't there a lot of belief between like uh like where like a lot of their powers coming from and stuff too like like wh- mm. what uh, man that that's actually okay that's that's really <laughs> yeah. cool. that, that is really cool that's something that uh i think probably a lot of people aren't thinking of on the surface i also have to say you know we always talk about how azeroth's going to change with a bunch of these different things when is this titan gonna hatch do you think like within Ooh. world of warcraft Hit, like, is there any? We are poking this thing over and over again. It's getting stabbed. We're eating its blood and shit. Like, <laughs> like, like, wake the heck up! What? The, oh, oh, you were actually eating that blood of Azrov. Yeah, you weren't supposed to eat it. You're supposed to store it in your necklace. You're not <laughs> supposed to digest it. In my mouth, dude. Oh man, I, I'm just like, at what point <laughs> does this Titan? actually pop out do you think that like like that is something that will happen in the 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 life of wow do you think eventually our planet is just going to be a giant colossus um well when a titan wake up we don't actually know what happens um like the chronicles kind of seems to describe it as the planet forms the body of the titan yeah um but in case they ever want to wake up Azeroth itself, then you're going to lose the planet to play on, right? So my personal hope is that she can like sliver out of that like a magical creature and leave like an eggshell behind. Because that would open up the potential of her yoinking Sargeras' sword out. Be like, yo, what up, champions? We're going to go and fight the Void Lords now. Oh, by the way, I've been in contact with the Pantheon. Sargeras is cool now. He's now one of the good guys. Illidan's riding on his shoulder. And all of a sudden, we have this titanic army to take us into the great dark beyond, into this unexplored space of World of Warcraft. And we're going to fight the Void Lords and whatever else we find there. Which would be sick. But also, <laughs> I feel like at a certain point, the planet like kind of has to die, right? Like, even if it's an eggshell. Because, like, oh. like one, one of the things is, is like, with, with like, um, What's it called? The the pri- like the elements, right? Like the primordials and everything that like live on the planet. Mm-hmm. All all of that's caused by the magic that's leaking out of this gaping wound of our Titan uh, mommy. It, it, like like that, right? Like no, so. No 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 what- no 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 no. Like elements are part of like the world that was created. I don't believe that the Titan itself has influence on it. I do remember that the gaping wound caused the Titan spirit to like devour the aspect of life. As the other four were like them more dominant. See, I, I thought like that. I thought that the primordials formed out of like the 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 bits that are leaking from the the Titan's power. 
Uh, see, like, which I could have misunderstood when I read Chronicle. She's on her, she's on her, her monthly event, and then all of a sudden, elements Bam. showed up. Elements, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the thing is, is like we know that the elemental planes exist as well, right? And inherently, anything mm -hmm. that's going to be leaking out of the Titan, th th this was also one of the questions that I had about it because it's like anything that leaks out of the Titan, you would assume would be mostly influenced by Arcane, right? Because that's what the titan is made out of like that's the plane or the cosmic force that titans are made out of so like some of that would suggest you're, you're making some assumptions though there see that is the thing that i feel like is the assumption that i've continually made that's been somewhat proven wrong right uh i, I like I, I think about the titan and i go okay this mm -hmm. is something that's made in the cosmic force of the arcane it influences the elemental plane at all does that mean that the elemental plane is influenced by the arcane or is there just more overlap between all these kinds um, of the, the way it works, uh, and, and about the elements popping into existence, like Draenor, for example, Draenor has elementals. Elemental, uh, like, you know, the inner grand, right? Like the elemental throne. Mm -hmm. uh, but Draenor has no titan inside of it. So the elements and titan are not related. The elemental plane was actually created by the titan keepers uh, in order to store, like, the elemental lords that they defeated. Because you can't get rid of the elements, right? You can't really just get rid of fire. It's 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 a cosmic force. So they found like a little home to store them in. And then to the question as to do they fall into, they are made by arcane? Maybe. Like I do remember that Sargeras like being whomped over by Fel all of a sudden gave him like a power upgrade for playing the elemental game like Fel beats yeah. arcane. But I don't know if I would describe them as being beings of arcane. They do fall in the category of order and whatnot, but to be of arcane, like when I think of a being made of arcane, I think like an arcane elemental, right? That's, yeah. That's like yeah, a being yeah. of arcane and a titan. I don't know. I don't know. God, the WoW lore has so much potential to just be so good. Like, see, all, all of the things that I really love about it are like these ideas of the cosmic forces. What what are the big bad? What are the big ideas of this universe? And ultimately, we are 100% getting some of that goodness with this because we're learning about a whole nother side uh, of the big picture rather than having another skirmish on top of the the, the back of a Titan eggshell, right? Like that, that, yeah, that's one that's... of the reasons I think I get frustrated with the Horde versus Alliance ship because I'm like, wait, there's so much <laughs> cool stuff in this story. Why are we talking about slapping green people and, and, and human? Like, why? Why are we talking about that when all this other stuff is there? Yeah, and, and you got to be excited because of BlizzCon. And this was something that I hoped for as well. Like over time, we, we had the storylines. And in the olden days, if you would track down any story in Warcraft, you would end up with three different factions. You had like the Titans, you had the Old Gods, and you had the Burning Legion. Any kind of story in Warcraft, you could trace back to them as a source. But then we got the Chronicles, and I love that you're so excited about like the cosmology forces, uh, because they also mentioned the BlizzCon, like we want to break into what is the light, what is order, what is arcane. Uh, and yeah, they want to get into that. So I'm really excited for them to create more pillars in the lore and actually go further into it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, uh, with chron chron for, for anyone who doesn't know, like when Chronicles actually came out, like changed a lot with, with how we kind of view oh, the story. And, uh, I, I think it took a really long time for them to kind of start to establish that and create that new footing. But I don't know if they've necessarily dived all the way. Like, I, I feel like we haven't had that jump or we dive all the way in on it yet, but I feel like mm. we're getting very close to that moment where we really can. Like, I feel like it's a very stable story now, and it, it's a good basis for, for building a lot of these things. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, and as, and as they keep refreshing old stories, like you mentioned, the Faction War, a lot of people are wondering, like, how long can WoW still keep going, and what kind of stories can they tell? But there is still so much potential in the storyline. I just mentioned The Great Dark Beyond, which is literally space. There is space mm -hmm. in Warcraft, and we've seen like two planets out there. There is so much more to explore. I, man, I, I that, that's one of the reasons, too, that in a weird way, I kind of want to end up off of Azeroth. Like, I kind of want Azeroth mm. to just hatch at a certain point, and, and we do get to go off Azeroth, because if that does happen, that means we get to explore all this stuff, and also, I, I would love... This is this is like we're getting super hypothetical here. I'll rein it back in after this. But uh, the, the thing is, is like, uh, just imagine what, what's the thing that classic has that that will just. Are never you br be just breaking up for me, or is it for Chet as well? 
Uh, am I breaking up for anyone? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's just it's probably just Discord cool. uh, in some capacity. Uh, the 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 thing is is when I actually look at everything that's uh everything that's going on. I start thinking about stuff. Yeah, guys, I, I, one of the things that happens with Discord right now, I think they increase the amount of uh, server like server size. So every now and then the calls get a little bit, uh, a little bit all over the place. So sorry. Uh, but yeah. Um, but what was I saying? What was I saying? Uh, oh, man, I completely forget. That actually We're talking about like the cosmology chart about breaking it open the potential exploring Azeroth being poof and then we can explore further. That's where we were. Yeah, but I forget where I was going. I'm so revved up <laughs> that I actually just, there's so many things popping into my head that I actually can't keep track of it. I'm not one to usually lo lose my train of thought. Some people are la going to laugh at the fact that I said that. But right, right now, I really, truly do feel so... And, and guys, this is why I say watch Novel's videos, because this is what happens to me every time I have a conversation with Novel. Every time I watch Novel's videos, I just want to play WoW, which is... <laughs> to, to make me want to do that even during bfa pretty tall order uh, i really do love this man's content a whole bunch i, I i'm just so, so excited to to see what else is out there and wow and your videos really do make me feel that way and, cool. and man i i just i, I want to know more about the titans i want to know more about the universe i want to know know more about wow and the fact that we're getting away from skirmishes does feel really good. What what are kind of the big things that you think people should be paying attention to if they're just getting into the lore now and they're like, I want to actually know what's going on in Shadowlands. Like, I I want to I want to be a lore nerd now. Teach me, show me the way, senpai. What would you tell those people? I would tell those people to find something that they are super interested in and build from there. Like for me, I got interested in the Rothgate event. We'd had characters like Bolvar and uh, Putris, I think was there. And that's pretty much how I started looking up like, okay, who is this Bolvar character? And I started putting like the pieces together. Uh, purely going into Shadowlands as a brand new expansion, just go with it. And if you're like, huh, I don't understand who uh, Kill for Sunstrider is, or I don't understand who Ufer the Lightbringer is, start doing research, like start figuring out where these characters come from. And if, if they pull in your interest, it's always when you're interested in something, it's always way easier to learn. And you mentioned this earlier as well, like the story can be a driving factor for you for, to play the game. And I feel the same at times. Like at times it's been purely finding out what the next chapter is going to be. But for others, the story will never be a thing. Like I know that, uh, that there are raiders out there that are like, nah, I don't really, I don't necessarily care why I'm killing this massive worm. I just want to know what loot I'm going to get, which is fine. It's, it's not going to be for everybody. But if you are interested in it, then I would just say find something that you are really invested in and, and build from there. So, so you're, much, you're much more in the area of like, all right, there, there's this guy. I, I'm going to watch this one 30-minute video on this dude instead of trying to go for the what is WoW lore and trying to get it all <laughs> in one shot. Because I, I feel like, did you... I, I'm trying to remember the last time that you've had a video that's just like, okay, this is everything that you need to know about a zone. I feel like m pretty much all of your videos are like, who is Chen Stormstout, right? I, I feel like your, your videos do tend to focus much more on characters it's been a while since i've done the zone stories but that's more so because i've been busy with other stuff i have for a okay. little bit done like the story of azuna or the story no sorry the story of azara or ashen vale and i do want to pick up that um the, that again as well as whenever a new expansion comes al along there's going to be new zones and they will be covered in great detail as well like this is what's going on but i always try to add more information than what you just see in the game like i'm trying to fill in some of the blanks some of the pictures that the game doesn't provide itself be it comics, be it novels, be it like this is some background information. Um, I treat every single video as this is your first experience with the lore, which is annoying to some. I, sometimes I get comments like, look, I've heard the story of the War of the Ancients 10 times now. Can you please stop? And I'm like, nah, if I would create every single one to build upon the, the other one, you're just going to create like this web and network of videos that you need to see. Whereas on yeah. YouTube, you just want to yeah. click on a video and be like, oh, cool, this is it. And I want you to actually follow what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I've always liked that about your videos because I forget things sometimes, as you already saw with me for my train of thought. I actually remembered what I did. I, I feel like if we get off the Titan, 
speculative thing. I, I feel like the one thing that Classic does really, really well, obviously, that will almost never be able to be accomplished in, in some capacity by another version of the game is just having such a giant world, right? I mean, instead of getting you know, four or five new areas that, that make up the, the, what you're crawling through in the zone. You had mm. two giant continents, uh, which was, which was wild and you could slowly level through them and, uh, g- get a lot out of it. I've always felt like if we did leave the planet, maybe there was hope that we could get an experience like that again. That That's a very speculative thing. And it's also like a very, hopeful thing i mean like the amount of time it would take to generate something like that is obviously ridiculous but that's kind of yeah, one of the reasons i've always the wanted the titan, titan to hatch <laughs> yeah, just get a new planet i mean they can do it without uh, yeah but it's it's difficult like when classic came out the the amount of stuff that they had to put in there has been insane and then cataclysm revamp that was kind of the cool part about the cataclysm is when they revamped the old world and added new stuff yeah it was like one of those like things that people I'm, I'm happy about People hated it, right? Like a lot of people hated it and then loved it. it it's one of those things was, where mm. I, I feel like if you did that with any zone besides classic, people would be fine with it. I, I, I think that there is a level two of just the second that something's gone and you're like, oh, I can't go back to it. People freak out, right? You, you feel like you've lost something mm. forever and, and you're like, but now I'll never be able to fly around in tundra and see the place where i leveled for the first time and remember my first ever wow girlfriend and how we used to watch the water <laughs> wax and wane with the moon and uh this is where i i captured my spirit beast my best friend i i named him poo after winnie the poo because he was a bear named artreus are like, you sharing your own history now yeah is that what's going uh, on hey we, we weave our stories from things we've experienced novel but i, I will <laughs> say though that uh, i i feel like any person who says something like that if you actually had a way to check how much t- time they had spent in Borean Tundra in the last y- years, it's zero, right? Mm-hmm. But but the second that it's gone and you can't go back, people are heartbroken by it. Uh, when it comes but- to classic leveling, it needed the revamp, let's be fair. And I, I know that there are a lot of classic fans out there, but oof, the questing experience is a bit rough. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the game was... I mean, the game was made... In, you know, they start making it in what two thousand, like literally two thousand. Mm. I, I mean, I don't even remember how many years of development it is, but it comes out in two thousand and four. Obviously, there are some things to learn. I, I think Classic obviously has a, a lot of things that I played a lot of Classic WoW. I love Classic WoW. It really is fantastic, and there's a lot that the new versions of the game can learn from Classic. But you look at Legion, you look at Mists of Pandaria, you, you you look at some of these. You look at uh, Burning Crusade, right? There, there are some things from these versions of the game that uh, obviously. Could, could be learned for for some of those zones the revamp with cataclysm uh it's, it's understandable why that happened and i i just i do feel this weird thing with expansions that i know we're always kind of going to feel where you don't really have you don't have a world you have a few zones and it's really tough mm-hmm. to ever tie them back together uh and, and that that's a tall order right i mean how would you really pull them back together but I do remember from Classic, and I think that they're going to release it right now, is that there's like going to be the whole Zug, Rup, and Hakkar, the Soul Flare bit again. And guess who shows up in Shadowlands again? Wait, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, why? Um, there is this, um, this dungeon. There was like this little red line going on during Battle for Azeroth, which was about Vol'jin spirits, right? And I mentioned before that Vol'jin died on the Broker Shore. And something wasn't quite right. There was something going on. Somebody whispered to him to make Sylvanas the war chief, and is like, why did you do that when she turned out to be Garrosh, but even worse? So during Battle for Azeroth, we started searching, and together with Talungi and Bane and a whole bunch of others, we started communicating with Vol'jin spirits, and we're like, yo, Vol'jin, what's going on, right? And he was like, well, don't blame me, it was the Loa that told me. But in Battle for Azeroth, um, turns out that it wasn't exactly the Loa who told him to make Sylvanas the war chief, at least not the ones that he fought. So now in um, Shadowlands, and this is very much data mined spoilery stuff, but you know, we're talking about spoilers anyways. Turns out that the one that whispered to Vol'jin to make her the war chief was Muzala. I know, not a name that a lot of people are like, oh, Muzala, oh, that guy. Muzala is a Loa. You can read a plaque on him in Zulfarak. You can uh, read a plaque on him in Zandalar. 
And he played a role in The Traveler, which is like free books, really, really cool series. And basically, Muzala is like a Loa of death, god of time, whatever you want to call it. It transforms into whatever is standing before him. In The Traveler, for example, he had like Murky in front of him and Murky nearly died to a whale shark. So Muzala, the god of death, turned into a whale shark, right? It's really cool stuff. So Muzala, for some reason, be it bored, be it trying to get people more dead or whatever, you know, he was the one who told Vol'jin to make Sylvanas the Warchief. And in the dungeon called The Other Side, we're going to be partying with Bonsamdi, um, and we're going to deal with Muzala, but there's also Hakkar the Soul Flayer. And Hakkar is like the Loa of blood he's always been described as, but there was also a whole bunch of blood sacrifices. His nickname is The Soul Flayer. You know, afterlife, there's a lot of abilities with the afterlife, so he's going to be part of the dungeon. Then, for some weird-ass reason, there's also going to be the Mana Storms, like Millhouse and Millie Mana Storm. Don't know how they ended up in the Shadowlands, but what they the? are there. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Last we saw of those two was uh, the Dalaran dungeon, the, the prison, where yeah. we free Millie, and she's like, Millhouse, how dare you? Burp, burp, burp. So they, they run off at each other, and I kind of just want them to have killed each other by accident with their experiments, and then, you know, they ended up in the Shadowlands together. That's kind of what I want to see. And then we're going to deal with Muzala, and we're going to deal with the whole idea of, oh, they've been messing with Vol'jin and the Loas and all that. It's, oh, from the date of my dialogue, it looks, ooh, it looks to be so good. All right, that sounds juicy. I, I feel like all of that, like anything that involves trolls in lore is sick. <laughs> it's all sick. Like all of the Loa stuff is all, it's oh, never missed for me. It's, it's never missed are... for me going to enjoy the new book that's coming out the one that's going to be connected to shadowlands um there's a little preview available online you are going to get your uh, mm, your trolls yeah you are <laughs> I, oh, man, like i i actually like when i i talk about like the lore like being the thing that, like like started pulling me I, obviously in wrath of the lich king one of the big things that pulled me in was like yeah the idea of the lich king like super cool Super mm-hmm. good story, a story that they try to repeat in a lot of ways to this day. Uh, but also the the other thing was like going through those zones with the trolls. I was like, yo, what is going on here? Like, what are what are what are these like those were the quests where I started to be like, yo, what is what is this? Like uh gun drack and mm-hmm. And, and then this we... were the place where they wanted to make a raid, right? And it just got cut out of development. Yeah, yeah. There there was supposed to be a troll raid in Wrath of the Lich King and it ended up getting cut. I don't know when it would have really fit in. I, I guess before Ulduar, maybe. Uh probably. It, it probably would have been something like that. Uh but but yeah, I, I mean the the troll the way that trolls influence so much of the of, of the lore, it's it's always pretty cool, uh from from the very start. I feel like mm-hmm. that's always been like like the whole idea of a Loa, I think, is pretty rad. Uh for anybody, I, I know a lot of people probably in my stream too, like they have no idea what uh a Loa even is. Uh on like a very basic level, can you just like describe kind of what the Loa are? Uh Loa is a term used by the trolls to describe a mighty powerful being. Uh, creatures like Scenarius or Goldrin that you might be familiar with from Warcraft 3 days, um, they are known as wild gods, but the trolls would call them Loa. But then you also got Loa like Bonsamdi and whatnot, much more specific to the troll races. They're very powerful spiritual beings um, that can, if they favor the trolls, can grant them boons. Uh, and the trolls can also worship them, make like blood sacrifices or just play their drums for them. Very much voodoo ritualistic. And in the case of Bonsamdi, like, oh, Bonsamdi, the new character added in Battle... Well, not a new character added, but like voice acted and brought back to life in Battle for Azeroth. Um, just a beautiful character. I'm so excited to see that he's going to get more storytelling. Oh, man, if you haven't seen those cutscenes, have you heard the voice acting? Apparently, they actually designed the movement of Bonsamdi in the cutscenes towards uh oh hello i am now just nothing but a blur cool i've never seen this one before oh what on uh on discord oh there i am <laughs> that was really cool i I turned into the matrix for a moment there wait i'm, wait, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it because i'm still watching with delay uh, i can't wait to like watch you like just like your camera spurg out 
There we go. That's better. But um, yeah, Bon Samedi actually made his movements in the cutscene towards uh, what the voice actor was doing. And it's just, it worked out so well for them. So yeah, Loa in, in one sentence, very powerful beings as described by the tools. Oh man. Yeah, Bu- Bon Samedi, I feel like he was definitely one of the biggest boons of of bfa <laughs> like he i feel like pretty much everybody loved their their uncle bob salamni and he also like a lot of the mechanics that came around him were, were pretty awesome as well who did you say that they were basing his movement off of though i missed that the voice actor for one somebody i uh, i don't know his name but it's like a new voice actor that came onto the team okay and he just did his lines and he brought the character so to life that they decided like okay we're going to tailor bon somebody and how he moves and how he reacts to the voice actors lines that are being done that, that is really awesome that, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad i'm glad he's gonna have a bigger story as well i like that that arc like the entire thing with like Rastakhan and all of that, uh, definitely, definitely did enjoy it. And to, to see that bear fruit again in, in Shadowland. Oh man. I'm, I'm actually like, so like right now the things going through my head is like, how am I going to catch up on all the bits of lore that I want to catch up on to make sure that I have everything. <laughs> so I'm completely knowledgeable, uh, when I do get, get in and get started. Also, I saw a lot of people talking about the idea of, you know, trolls are the the oldest race in Azeroth. Is that a hundred percent true? Because I know like the night elves were trolls, and then they get like a little bit mm-hmm. too close. They're to one the of the oldest races, that's for sure. Do do we know what the oldest race is? Like, is that like completely spelled out? Because it it does like trolls are are they the oldest playable race? Because they're like the only organic. They're they're like definitely the first organic race, right? Then everything else is titan made stone and machine right yeah not not all of the playable races but they are definitely up there when it comes to the old race i'm trying to remember there was like ancient text that described that the murlocs saw the coming of the titans as well um but they are definitely up there yeah it kind of depends on how far you want to draw back the line of answer of because let's not forget that there was a time before the titans came uh, where the old gods ruled the planet and yes we know about some of the creatures that were hanging out there elemental lords and you know the the kafir and the kafrax and all the old god creatures but what about the races that just lived on azeroth itself during the ties of the black empire uh what happened to them oh and, yeah they uh, could have just died off too right there could have just been a bunch yeah, of yeah or just, just huddle like, or survive somewhere or like go deep into the core of the world and show up and be like yo what happened over the last fifty thousand years like we, we don't really know those details but for the question like trolls are they old races yes they are very very old uh, like orcs or aliens torn are old too right the yangle or whatever like the yeah, yangle were described as being part of at least the war of the ancients and then they kind of started to migrate or whatnot and then they came back to scenarius land and those became the tarn whereas the yangle they stayed in the mr pandaria area how the heck did the pandas come to be where, where the where they come so from the pandas has not been described yeah, it doesn't really make much sense, does it? <laughs> I, don't, I still don't know where... I like the does pandas, Does it not make too. sense? You like, don't... How, what? How dare you? I, uh, where'd they come from? I don't get it. Walker Cho is a gift. How dare you? I like uh, the I pandas. I, I like the pandas. Don't get me wrong. I mean, after mm-hmm. after talking to me for five minutes, you, I feel like most people would be like, this guy liked Mob, didn't he? I, I feel like uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty obvious thing about me. Yeah, like Monkey Badger said, that there's something uh, speculated, suggested that maybe it was furbogs that like went to the waters. Like you remember in Mr. Pandaria how they explained that the mm. murlocs became like the genu, and some are wondering like are the furbogs the ones that became the Pandaren? But we don't know for certain. That that is pretty interesting. Yeah, the idea of just like drink drinking that water. All all the all the smart races just drank the right water. <laughs> Magical like, Titan water. All of a sudden, they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Titan juice, man. Oh, I, I love it. Uh, okay. What, we, we don't have a, a huge... I, I think we have, what, a half hour left with, with you right now? Uh, I believe... Yeah, should we still is. cover, by the way, um, real short? I don't think, like I saw the note, I don't think we've really call, uh, talked about the Venfir Covenant, have we? No, let's, let's talk about that. Right. So to take it all the way back to Shadowlands, um, there are the Venfir, which I mentioned earlier, are like the ones that will punish the souls of those that have been naughty, uh, prideful souls, sinful souls. And this area is 
I'm this is this together with Arnwald is probably one of the zones that I'm most excited to see about. Because the way that they described it at BlizzCon is that this is going to be like this area where the light will scour the land and you're hurting and the, um, the covenant is basically created in order to make sure that you get rid of whatever, you know, all your sins. And then you can become part of the covenant and you yourself are going to get other people rid of their sins. Um, so yeah, spirits like Kilfus are going to be here. Um, but the question has become this covenant it's kind of become gluttonous, like every single soul is just served on their table. And what they were once meant to remove, the sin and the pride, they seem to be becoming more and more prideful. There's also a storyline about a certain sire that uh, like cov the, the covenant needs to be ruled by something. And there's a conflict with the sire. And we have to deal with Kilfus in a raid setting again. And I don't know if you've seen Kilfus's model, um, but the dude, oh, they gave him blood droplets instead of his regular, like, the fell orbs on his shoulders. And it's just, get to carry around a freaking uh, tombstone on your back. And the Covenant, this one in the Venfir, is going to be super duper edgy. The vampire models with their armor. Dude, it is... Mwah. I'm looking up the. I saw the Kalthus one, but it was like it was a. Let me see if I. Can, oh, here we go. I found it pretty easy. Oh wow, <laughs> that is so edgy. Yeah, here I'll link it to you. Uh, wait, I actually. Where Purgatory is of extra steps. Yeah, basically. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no, 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 I'm just linking this over to show it on stream. Go ahead. Like Basically, Revendreft is the, the final stop before they throw you into the Maw. So you can be naughty and you end up in Revendreft, but if you're irredeemable, you end up in the Maw. The Dude. vampire vibe, like Castlevania, they got castles and freaking vampires. The armor with like little bets on it. Ooh, it's looking well good. And this zone, I, I'm really hoping to see like the skybox and cages. Uh, I don't know if you remember from Warcraft 3 where... Uh, there was this character called Getafos. I'm really hoping to see Getafos together with Kilfos. Uh, there can be some really cool stuff here. Weapons are amazing. Yeah, somebody linked the Kilfos model from Heroes of the Storm, where they gave him like the edgy uh, blood model. And it all makes sense now. I might actually be able to tweet it to you. Hang on. Holy crap. I had not seen the Muzala model. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is wild. He's like a like a evil furry polar bear. If you can get him to animate, uh, like he is also a massive one, I would recommend to make him walk <laughs> and just turn on like making my way downtown, walking fast. Oh my way! To be able to, um, if you search on Wildheads for oh, Muzella. I just click model viewer, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, wait, ready to go, model viewer. Animation. Just start to make him walk and whatnot. You can also see the F's like, um, of course, it's all data mine, so we're not certain, but he has like a emerge. It seems to be uh, quite the look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> look at him strutting his stuff. What is that song even called? By <laughs> if I could can follow it to you. Oh, what's that song called? It's Mich is it, uh, What's her name again? Wait, this is actually going to bug me. Do, 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 do. It's Michelle sure Branch. Somebody right? in the chat knows, right? Michelle, mm -hmm. Michelle Branch. No, it's, is it Michelle Branch? It, it's, it's Vanessa, Vanessa something. Vanessa Carlton, according to chat. Vanessa Carlton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanessa Carlton. Because it's the uh, Thousand Miles. Oh, thank you. All Trust right. in chat, dude. Trust in chat. A <laughs> special... Uh... Oh. oh, I yoinked it. Look at that. That's apparently from Heroes of the Storm, and it makes with Revendreft. This makes a lot more sense. Look at that. I'm literally listening to Thousand Miles while watching this dude walk. <laughs> <laughs> Actual comedy. Actual comedy. <laughs> Man, he's a burly boy. He's mm -hmm. a very burly boy. Oh, as for browsing the models as well, uh, you can see the Winter Queen over there, which is just absolutely gorgeous. There's Bluefur or Papa Smurf. 
the Winter Queen is going to be partying in Arnhemwald. And the idea behind Arnhemwald is, as mentioned before, the anima is out of balance. And as it's supposed to be like this cycle of rebirth, they're uh, dealing with a shortage of anima. So she's going to have to make the choice like, okay, who do we give anima to? And who's going to wither away forever? And there's also a data mind Yesera model. And my girl Yesera making a return. Yes, please. Really? Mm, yes, please. <laughs> I'm looking at the that Hots model is wild. I know, right? Uh, Hots model is really crazy. If we go back to the main model menu, there should also be one for the Arbiter, which is like the little sword thingy. Yeah, there she is. This is the Arbiter. She is the one who judges the souls and decides where you go to. And is it just my imagination, or does that look like a sword that you could just pick up and start fighting with? Wow. Yeah, the Arbiter is strange looking. Yeah, right? She's I part of like the new race design. It's really cool. Yeah, I kind of thought it, I like I, I instantly when I heard about like the the yeah, wait. Also, all of the uh, she, th that's like the only model that has like a bunch of combat animations as well. I, I feel like with the Arbiter, like the first thing I kind of thought of, like I was thinking of like those old ancient Egyptian stories about like weighing of the soul and all of that. Mm -hmm. Like, or I, I, if we want to, yeah. if we want to use anime, what about Dragon Ball Z and just make her the uh, King Yama and judge his souls and whatnot? Can I tell you a secret? I am uh, the biggest never... anime nerd on the entire earth, but I have never watched Dragon Ball Z. I've never done it. I think I think I'm. Done I thought you left the stream. call. I, I heard. I heard a. Uh, I heard the disconnect. <laughs> I heard the disconnect, and I thought you actually left the call. <laughs> <laughs> How have seen... you never seen Dragon Ball before? What? Because because I've seen Naruto twice. I feel like you don't need. Like, You're gonna I watch garbage like Naruto, but not Dragon Ball. No, it's the other way around. I feel like DBZ is like it. It's Naruto for kids, right? That's always what I thought. So wait, it's Dragon not? Ball. I thought is Dragon Ball amazing. Was a kid show. Naruto, they just wave their fingers in the air, whereas in Dragon Ball, you watch five episodes of two grown ass men screaming at each other. Hitting them twice and then screaming some more. It is amazing entertainment. I I think that Naruto is one of the best stories ever told, hands down. And it's it's for it's for adults. Yeah, sure, it's for adults. Tell yourself. It, it, hey, what? They're just like they're just maybe two hundred episodes of kids, and then after that, it's all for adults. Naruto is just random folklore put together. I mean, that's all of the best stories. Should I actually watch Dragon Ball Z? I, I was told to watch uh, Kai, I believe. The, the real reason yeah. I haven't watched uh, Dragon Ball uh, is because I can never figure out where to watch it. That, that's the truth of it. I, I wanted uh, to start I'll, I'll, it. I'll, let's, let's take this conversation off to the stream, shall we? And I'll, give you, I'll give you a hint. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 all right, I'll, I'll watch Dragon Ball. <laughs> I'll watch it. Uh, all right, let, let's keep moving along with these covenants, right? Uh, I think mm. we're about to get the covenants up on uh, on the stream. So we, we we talked about pretty much everything in detail. We talked about the Venthyr, which I'm starting to gravitate towards. A lot of people are like, ooh, edgy vampire boys. So yeah, in, in short, um, we have the, uh, the Kyrian, which is the first one, a Bastion. The angel people, if you die in service to others, you will end up here like Ufer the Lightbringer and uh, the origin of the Valkyr slash becoming a Valkyr yourself. The Maldraxians, which is very much connected to the Scourge and the Necromantic powers. Might is right, spirits like Draka. Then there is Arnwald, like I mentioned before, the counterpart of the Emerald Dream, a rebirth, recycle, uh, spirits like Scenarius slash Ysera. And there is the Venfir in Revendrefts, which is the vampire boy spanking you. And then there is, and I kind of wonder if this is actually going to be a thing, like Sylvanas has a little covenant going on with the Jailer, right? But what if that covenant also opens up to us? Like, she gained more power from the Jailer. What if we want to gain more power from the Jailer? Should, could we be able to join him in a mob? Hmm. 
Very cool. That would be very cool. I also, you keep saying spanking, and it makes me want to be a Venthyr, but then I look, <laughs> I, I look at Ardenwall, like I look at the night, and I'm like, wait, this is actually what I want to be. But then you say spanking again, and I'm like, I gotta be a Venthyr, dude. I just want to get spanked by vampires. Oh man, I, I love that part where they've actually made it so hard to decide where you're gonna go. Um, and to bring it all the way back where we started at is, I really hope it's not going to be a power choice because for my paladin, I expected like the Kyrian were going to be my gem, right? But then I look at Arnwald and I'm like, oh, these fairy models, these fairy wings. Are you kidding me? Then I look at the Venfear, like, oh, I could be like a vampire edge boy. And then Meldrex is where it's like, oh, okay. They got like the skeletal mask. The happy skeletal boys are amazing. And it's good that they made it so hard. I'm going to be playing them anyways, but it's all about like, where's my main character going to go in at? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like there's also a lot of potential too. It's like, oh, I'm playing a warlock right now. Like if it's your alt and you're like, my warlock should be a necro, right? Like things like that, where it actually does tie in with the classes as well. Like it does open up for a lot of customization. Damn, I'm I'm getting excited. I, I'm getting pretty yes. pretty pumped. I'm so hoping that those cosmetic wings are actually going to be, become mounts later down the line. It would be so cool that the, you could like the bone wings and, and the Kyrian wings that you could just fly around with that. Oh, please, Blizzard, please. What, wait, you're saying if the wings could actually let you fly? Yeah. Did, have you ever been able to fly with just wings before? Did the dagger allow you to do yeah. that? that? That's it, right? No, just... uh, Aviana's Fetter was a buff that would just give you wings so you could fly around for a bit. Avionor's feather was bustified. I remember how broken uh, that was. That was in Wad, right? Point, at some point, you could still use it in Warsaw Gulch, and you could literally fly the flag from that one base crazy. to the other. <laughs> yeah, Avionor's feather was wild. Like that, it was so strong. It was so fast. Um, but yeah, the the only other thing with wings that really happened was uh, what was the daggers, right? The legendary daggers for rogues. Uh, they give you temporary like slow fall. Uh, the new trinket in Nyalofa, Raphael's trinket, gives you temporary slow fall. There's been several quests which give you minor wings, of course. Like for now, as far as we know, this is like a backpack transmog. Um, but imagine that they give you like a, a zone buff, or once flying actually becomes available, and you can turn in these wings for actual wings. Like you have earned your wings with our covenant hero. Go and explore the Shadowlands. It's. I mean, there are so many mobs that are actually already flying with these wings. I see no reason why players couldn't be able to do so. And every, every Covenant has wings, right? Like, every, every Covenant? Mm -hmm. Some variation of them, yeah. I think the Arnwald have, like, weird-ass twigs that you put on your back. You know, add some somersault to it, and you suddenly have flowers or, like, butterfly wings. I don't know. Just, just give people some wings. Yeah, wait, I'm actually... I'm scrolling through to just look at all the backpacks right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that... Yeah, that is uh, that would be really cool, right? I, I mean, I'm assuming that we're in a scenario as well where we unlock flying. We we probably unlock flying pretty late, so there yeah. would be the potential for something like that to just pop up, and all of a sudden, instead of wow, we might fly like actually fly, <laughs> we might we'll actually make it fly. like. Or make it specific to your uh, to your covenant. Like, say that you're going to get world quests that are connected to your covenant, right? So you're going to be partying a lot in your zone, and then for certain missions, you're going to be sent out to the other covenants. I'm just pitballing here. I'm no idea if that's actually going to happen. But as a zone buff, as a covenant buff, you in that specific zone uh, are actually going to be able to fly with the wings that you have, rather than having to wait for flying to unlock later down the line. I think that would be a very nice bonus. Get flying earlier, or your wings are like super fast, or something like that. In that particular, yeah, like job. specific for the zone where your covenant is based. I don't think that's much to ask. Is it Blizzard? Come on, that that would be. I, I think that would be pretty cool as well. I, I like that a lot. All right, is there anything glaring that we missed so far? Did we uh, miss anything really big? I mean, we didn't really touch upon the raid, but truth be told, I still need to like deep dive into what is the raid actually about. Okay. Um, have we touched upon anything glaring that we haven't really spoken about? No, not really. Unless chat has like massive questions that they still want to ask. That that's a really good idea. Yeah. If if anybody in chat has some questions, we we got a few minutes left here uh, with Novel to actually ask some questions. And we could uh, just kinda... go back to. Uh, 
Uh, we could just go back to you know discussing Dragon Ball and Naruto. You know, uh, I'm always I'm always down to talk about Naruto. I'm not sure uh, not sure yet on Dragon Ball. It's gonna take a little while to to get me completely sold. I think. We'll, we will see what happens with the scourge when there is no Lich King. It's the first question that I saw in chat. Uh, I mean, the Scourge would be running rampant, ain't it? And I think that's going to fall in line with the uh, starting events, which is like the pre-patch. And in Wrath of the Lich King, we actually had the Scourge invasion as a pre-patch, where like undead were roaming the worlds. I imagine that's going to be the fact of it. Like the undeads are no longer on control Bovar. So rise up, heroes. They're trying to take your villages now. Best get it back. Where did the tortoises go? Uh, there was actually a tweet about that today. Any turtle that you did not save is now in the maw, being a snack for the jailer. You're welcome. <laughs> they actually tweeted about that today, and it was really painful. Uh, so first start as dark in the Kyrian starting zone. Um, the full details are not revealed yet, which I actually kind of like. It seems to be the way that they set it up is um, they're explaining in, in that story, that area, that certain people are not down with the Kyrian lifestyle. They're not down with giving up who they were. And the reason for that, be it the Ma, be it that they don't have enough anima, be it that it's just against their nature, that there's just too much happening in their life to give that up. There is some reason why Ufer turned into the purple smurf. It seems to be that the storyline is going to continue only when we actually sign up with the Covenant. So they give you a little taste of what's going on. But if you want to know the full details, do you, you know, get Ufer back to your side or are going to be like two different factions of Kyrian? That is still to be revealed as far as I know. Yeah, it, it almost seems like the, the story is supposed to be one of the things that draws you to pick a covenant, which I, I think is pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, so good. Yeah, it, it's just that. I mean, that's one of the reasons, though, why I feel like a lot of people have been kind of outspoken about different things with the covenants because it's like, hey, look, this is just not how I game. Like, I just want maximum power. If I can't get maximum power, I'm heated if I have to change these all the time. But if you're mm -hmm. sitting in a vacuum, there are some things that look really cool about it. Uh, Rich and Abel, what are your theories on what happened to the sword and Sargeras? Any thoughts on Sargeras helping us fight the Jailer? Uh, well, I mean, you know quite a bit about that, right? Like, what's actually uh, yeah, going th on? There was, there was recently an interview where they said, like, the sword is not going to be touched for quite a while. Um, so I imagine that the sword and that storyline from Battle for Azeroth, at least, is just going to be there for little bits. Um, will Sargeras help us fight the Jailer? In, in theory, anything's possible, but uh, if I had to put any money on it, something right now, and we, we talked about it earlier as well, I would say that once the Void Lord story comes around, that is when we'll see the Return of Sargeras, and that is when we'll see that sword being picked up and actually wielded by Azeroth itself. But that's purely a feeling. Yeah, speculation, but pretty cool speculation nonetheless. It would have been my ending for Battle for Azeroth, I swear. Azeroth waking up would have been the perfect ending, and they could have just gone into the Great Dark Beyond, and that would have been the next expansion, but no. We that, laser beam is off the dev. Ooh. See, that was what I wanted for, for the end of the expansion, too. Not even necessarily the, like, I, it was a little bit different. My, my, like random idea of how I thought it was going to go didn't involve like the same hatching of Azeroth as yours did. But I, I, I wanted to see, you know, it woke up time to go into the void. We had this crazy, crazy expansion literally into the void is the best expansion name ever. That would be so <laughs> metal, so metal. Uh, I, I still do hope that we, we get it at some point. Um, maybe uh, I, I can't imagine that we want it at some point get to go into the void um mm, it will come it. one day my it, yeah i mean that's one of the ones though where i mean we've asked this question quite a few times and there always still does tend to be a big bad but it's like where do you go from there how do you get a, a bigger bad than that uh I, I feel like the void is still the home of the biggest bad that azeroth has ever known what if azeroth woke up already and that's why we are in the shadowland uh i think that that is pretty unlikely right do you know uh yeah. there's also somebody who asked like how are we with healing azeroth uh battle for azeroth apparently the pitch perfect ending you could wish for again it could be that all what we're seeing is fake and i know a lot of people are wishing that what we're seeing is fake which in my opinion tells a lot about the story that's being told um <laughs> but according to Magni, azeroth has been cleansed of the uh old god's corruption she is perfectly fine. Her heart is beating strong. Sure enough, she will need a little bit more extra help with healing, but we're out. We're in the clear. 
we no longer need to farm islands to pump her full of ass right, is what he's saying. Also, how much uh, effect did the Azerite itself have on our mental? I, I, I know that that was something that was talked about quite a bit, but I feel like a lot of people have maybe forgotten any aspects of that. Uh, I, I feel like I didn't have a clear resolution on it. Because at the beginning, it kind of re- reminded me of, uh, what was that stuff called? Like, Kajamite? It almost reminded me of that in, in some ways. Like, how it was mm-hmm. affected. Because it, like, brought out character aspects in people, right? Or heightened character aspects in people. Like, how, how much were people really affected by Azerite? Not at all. Uh, Azerites, which was supposedly described as like this this uber powerful resource, which was going to change the face of warfare forever. But the effects that we actually see in game, yeah, sure enough, there are here and there. Like you got Ashvein and the Ashvein foundry making weaponry of it. Sure enough, Azerite definitely hurts. But I kind of felt like they dropped it rather quickly and went with the idea of, okay, just fill your necklace with it now. Um, of course, it's also used for Azerite gear, but when it comes to personality, uh, the only real change that I saw was the way that they described it in the book. Holding it, giving you brilliant ideas. Um, you know, you could use it to heal and save the world, or you could use it to destroy it. But the major description used with that is just in the books and in-game. I don't recall anyone really changing from it. Yeah, I feel like uh, that, that's how I felt with a lot of stuff. I felt like it kind of just got dialed back. Right, like everything kind of just felt like it got dialed back at a certain point and kind of abandoned, maybe too, uh, in a certain capacity, just based off of how stuff was going. Uh, guess they're trying to make not every bad guy have corruption as their motive, says Drizilla. In the case of Sylvanas, like she has her motivation, but it would just be kind of cool to see that okay, when Sylvanas holds as right and when Enemy holds as right. They like they they feel and they get empowered, and then when we hold as right, or when we see other characters use as right, they don't really seem necessarily that much different than they used to be. Like if this is supposed to give you like brilliant ideas, then how do you how do you even win anymore? Um, and I think I think like the effects of as right uh, could have been a lot more than what we used it for. Yeah, I I like I really like it. It was called Kashmite, right? Am I saying that the uh, Kashmite is the old stuff? Yeah. Yeah, like that that was that that was like what I kept thinking of, like the the idea like that that made goblins, right? Like that that's literally it made them have so many good ideas that they turned into like a whole new intelligent race, right? I, I and I expected this to to just be incredibly powerful and stuff and uh didn't didn't necessarily have that feeling, but Azerite's gone now, right? Like we're not gonna we're not gonna see any more of it as we move into uh, this new realm of existence. Mm, I, d- I don't think it's gonna be playing like uh, as big of a role as it did, uh, but I don't know if we'll be entirely gone. It kind of depends. Like when it comes to Azerite, we know that um, uh, Gallywix he already had Azerite for quite a while. That's the reason why their island blew up. But it didn't really activate until Sargeras wounded her. So I'm kind of wondering if that wound was like the thing that made it go glowy and extra powerful. Um, and now that we fixed the wounds, maybe it's no longer useful. Sort of way, but okay. no real details were given on, on Blizzard part on that one. Uh, the beginning quest for how we enter Shadowland. Yet, yeah, any speculations on data mining talk about? Uh, Nabal already kind of talked about that, right? Like the idea that uh, it seems like we enter through the mall and then we fight our way out, which seemed like a pretty impossible task, but we're able to do it. But we don't know if we're we don't know if we're necessarily going to get a quest that shows that aspect. It seems like I, well, I'm assuming I mean, we, we would. We know from the BlizzCon presentation. I'm I'm purely going from what they said at the presentation is that we are uh, going to end up in the mall and we need to make our escape and that's what makes us so special, super duper. And this is also reflected as we enter the new zone, where we try to tell them like, look, we just come from the mall, things are wrong, and we definitely go to the mall. But the details as to how are we summoned by Bolvar, how do we end up at the mall, those details are still very much up in the air. Yeah, I, that that might even be. I, it seems like testing is something they want to do a whole lot of obviously i I think it's going to be one of the most tested expansions we have in a lot of ways yeah i I think it's a really just wait and make a good product it doesn't have to release that quickly just chill make what it needs to be yeah i i mean i wonder too i mean we might be in a scenario you know just with everything going on in the world it might just take longer for it to come out even if they 
Yeah, as well. Yeah, we're we're trying to rush it, so I I feel like you almost have a. Uh, not saying that it makes it any easier. Obviously, the current situation it definitely makes it a lot harder. But I do feel like the community probably will give the benefit of the doubt based off the amount of time that it actually uh, takes to 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 get it going. Uh, any, I keep seeing this question. Uh, any thoughts on the Titan Homeworld novel? Uh, no, but I think this reflects to the recent Q and A that was had. That was like, um, I've, I've, and this is purely from what I remember. Is that the the souls like mortal souls go to the shadowlands but they were talking about like magical souls that don't instantly go there for example demons they end up in a twisted nether and the idea was tossed up like what happens if a naru dies what happens if a titan dies and that's where people got like speculation going okay like what is the titan realm sort of say like where does the titan go when they die uh, any information on it none that i could give um going with what we've seen with aonar for example in the in the um, on Taurus raid that's the direction we're supposed to be looking at um where we where we guarded her from the demons and then she came back and whatnot um but i don't know and i don't think anybody really has any any strong information as to what's going on with the titan spirits but it was also more the idea of um this is a, a potential possibility because I didn't see them completely shut down the idea that Titans actually could go to the Shadowlands. It was more like they go somewhere else first before they go to the Shadowlands. Okay, but who knows? Yeah, pe- people were going like, "What? What happens? What happens? God dies like that? <laughs> like, what happens yeah. to? Like we're going to face off against all these beings in the Shadowlands, but what happens when you kill something in the Shadowlands? Do you kill it extra? Like." Do you bring it back to life? Like, what happens if you die in the Shadowlands? Oh, God. Is there a Shadow Shadowlands? My brain. Like my brain. Mm. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Uh, sorry. I, I didn't hear your uh, projection there. I, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no. We're out of time. Wrap it up. Yep. I, I thought that's what it was. I hope that I heard wrong. It does <laughs> look like uh, we're kind of at the point here where we are a little bit out of time. I do believe... That coming up on the the channel right now, I believe we're talking about Mythic Dungeons next. Uh, but I, I do want to say, novel, it is always an absolute pleasure to get to talk to you about the lore. It gets me hyped to play the game. It gets me hyped for Shadowlands. And anybody who wants to learn more, definitely check out novel's content. Check out his YouTube videos. Check out his Patreon. Learn about everything that's going on in the lore. That's everything that I know. I have learned from this man not only on this call but also from his YouTube channel. So, so definitely check it out. Just Novel. tonight, that was all it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Novel, thank you so much, though, uh, for, for taking the time and chatting with me. Of course. My pleasure. It's always fun. Yeah, yeah. I hope, I hope we get to do no, it again I hope Chad really, really enjoyed it as well. I hope there weren't too many technical difficulties, and I hope that people are as excited about Shadowlands as you and I now are. 